years ago, the world learned about Trayvon Martin. A violent confrontation with the Neighborhood Watch volunteer in Sanford, Florida, led to the death of the unarmed African-American teenager. Despite the devastating loss, Trayvon's loved ones are honoring his memory by working to create hope and change. Please welcome Trayvon's mother, Sabrina Fulton. Hi, Sabrina. Hi, Sabrina. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, words cannot describe uh, the loss of a child seven years later. How are you doing? Well, I'm very tired from traveling. It's very cold here, but I'm glad to be here. <laughs> um, I have been um, very busy, um, you know, doing speaking engagements, um, bringing awareness to senseless gun violence. Uh, we have youth events. We, you know, I'm just all over the place right now. Right. President Obama once said after Trayvon's death, this could have been my son. Did you ever worry about something like this happening to your son in Sanford, Florida? I did not. Uh, we are from Miami, Florida. Uh -huh. Trayvon was born and raised in Miami. And um, in Miami, we have so many different nationalities there because it's, you know, right there like on the water. Pot. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I've never expected, you know, to, to be living this type of way without my son. Um, I have another son, Javaris Fulton, that, uh, you know, also has to endure this uh, right. tragedy as well. But no, I, n I never thought about it. Um, President Obama did create the program uh, My Brother's Keeper as a result of what happened to Trayvon and I really commend him for that. You know, it was an honor just for him to say that he can relate to something that happened to somebody that was miles away from him. Right, of course we know this garnered national attention uh, and a very controversial verdict uh, with George Zimmerman being acquitted. Have you spoken to George Zimmerman? Why, why would I speak to him? Amen. Has he ever attempted to apologize to you or reach you to make an apology? Well, we uh, were, were in court with him during the trial, but during the bond hearing, uh, one time uh, he mentioned about, you know, being uh, apologizing for what he had done, but it didn't mean anything. I mean, I would have said the same thing if I was trying to get out of jail. Right, and you're fighting for hope, you're fighting for change. Tell us about some of the things that you're doing. Um, some of the things I recently attended um, in Oakland, California, um, President, the o Obama Foundation has the uh, My Brother's Keeper. I recently attended that with some other mothers. And so I kind of uh, cling to other mothers who have been through the same tragedy that mm -hmm. I've been through. Um, I was there with uh, Oscar Grant's mother and mm -hmm. also Jordan Davis's mother. Um, we spoke on a panel. Um, John Legend was the facilitator. And it's about um, bringing an awareness to senseless gun violence so we can stop, try to prevent what's happening to our children because we want our children to grow up just like anybody else. And so um, that's very important. Um, with the foundation, we also do youth summits. I have the the circle of mothers. We have the circle of fathers where we bring, I bring mothers in every year and it's about healing. It's about bonding. It's about making sure that we stay educated and just to know that you have somebody, you know, mm -hmm. that's on your side that that's going through the same things that you're going through and you feel like you're not alone with going through this tragedy because it's something I have to carry with me the rest of my life. Right. I, I cannot imagine sitting here. I have a son too and I cannot imagine just that your strength, um, and since Trayvon, you would think after we learned about Trayvon and that horrific day, everything, you would think things would have gotten better seven years ago, but I feel like it hasn't. And how do you stay so hopeful? I stay hopeful because I know that our young people are so resilient. I, I know our young people have the energy that we don't have to fight anymore. I, I believe that I put all my faith in the young people that they're going to make positive change for us. We we are kind of set in our ways with, mm. the, with our generation, but I think our young people see the changes we need to make and they're going to make the positive change. I don't believe it's going to be done in our generation. Yeah. Mm. There's so much attention around this. Did, was it harder because you felt like maybe your invasion of privacy or was it easier because people in the country was grieving with you? Um, both. Um, you know, my family is very private. We were very private people and now everything was, you know, so public. But um, I use that as a platform for not only what happened to Trayvon, but other families as well. And so when I speak, I don't only speak for my son, I speak for all the Trayvon Martins, you know, the names that you don't know about. Um, 
But it was also good to know that I wasn't alone, that I had so much support. I had so many people that were praying for me and standing with me, and it made a big difference, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the Black Lives Matters movement is still making the progress? I think <laughs> with everything that we, they're, they're making movement, but people could be doing a lot more. Mm -hmm. You know, people can't just like something on social media and think they're they've done their part. You know, you gotta just do a little bit more than mm -hmm. that. You have to uh, connect yourself with a nonprofit organization and make sure that you're doing the work. You can't mm -hmm. just say, you know, I like this, you know, I agree with this, I support this. You actually gotta support things. You have to yeah. put the action behind the word. Absolutely. You're in town because you're gonna be at St. Sabina this weekend for a speaker series with our good friend, Father Mike Flager. Tell us a little bit more about what's happening there. Um, they're just gonna have um, different speakers to come in and I have been selected as one of the speakers and I'm excited about that. I'm excited about being in Chicago um, because some of the same things that are happening in Florida, mm -hmm. New York and right. Texas are happening here in oh, Chicago yeah. as well. And so <clears throat> I thought that, you know, it was important that I come, but it's, it's not about bashing anybody. It's about moving to the next step. It's about making sure that we are doing our part individually. Yeah. Right. Trayvon would have turned 24 earlier this month, uh, if you could say anything to him or what would you say and what do you think he would say back? Uh, first of all, he would tell me that he's proud of me. Um, yeah. And yeah. yes, <laughs> and uh, I would tell him happy birthday mm -hmm. and that I love yeah. him. Right, do you remember your last words with him? I don't, I don't not, I can't recall right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you're doing truly remarkable work and it's yeah. work that needs to be done and continue to be done. Thank you. Thank you. You can hear more from Sabrina tonight at St. Sabina at 7.30. She will be the featured speaker.